A spool rewinder is one of the most overlooked and underappreciated tools in 3D printing. Coincidentally, they can be 3D printed. Now I will admit, I am one of those people that overlooked the spool winder. I did not see its use until I started to accumulate rolls of filament that I could not use. Today I wanted to fix that, so I printed out three of the most common and the most popular designs for spool rewinders. One being a simple one that attaches to a drill and just... Spools up your filament, another one that's a little bit more advanced and has a stand and a couple of more parts to it. And then finally I printed the flagship of spool rewinders. This one takes multiple hours to print, multiple plates, a bunch of different types of filament. That's a lie. It only uses two. You could use TPU and PLA. So basically two types of filament. But anyways, does the one plate drill respooler work as good as the large multi-plate spooler? I don't know. We'll find out though. This video is gonna be a side by side by side comparison for all three of these spool rewinders. First, we're gonna be going over print time, how many plates it takes, the amount of filament, all that stuff that you need to get these made. Then we're gonna go over the assembly, how easy is it? Does it require any assembly? And next, we're gonna test them out. Of course, that is what this all comes down to. How well does it actually work? So if there's something specific that you're interested in, you can use the chapters down below and skip to this video as much or as little as you want. The first design we're gonna look at is called the Respool Tool by Alex. Robinson and it was featured on Uncle Jesse's channel which he commented on one of my videos. I don't even know what to say. That's just awesome. And I finally had a reason to say in a video. I've been waiting for so long to say that. But now that I'm done freaking out about a comment, this print is going to take you 3.1 hours on any of your bamboo printers. This can even be printed out on the A1 Mini if you want. Like I said, it's going to take 3.1 hours and only 86 grams of filament. So you are not looking at a heavy investment here. This is by far the most simple respooler that I could find. And this is the one that attaches to your drill. Next, we have the Easy Bamboo Spool Winder. Now this one is going to take you 7.5 three hours and it will fit on one plate as well just like the last one if you have a larger build plate 256 millimeters if you have the a1 mini it's gonna have to take two plates but it still can be done and it's gonna take 251 grams of filament i almost forgot to tell you that and finally the one you've all been waiting for this is the pasta light receiver by kyz designs and it is a remix of the pastamatic spool rewinder now i don't know too much about that i'm just telling you what it says in the title for just the receiver it will take 9.7 hours and three plates on one of your larger build plate printers now there is an a1 mini version but it's gonna take four plates and over 15 hours to print and if you don't have the time to do something like that you can check out today's sponsor which is PCBWay. PCBWay offers an amazing service where you can upload your 3d print files pick from all sorts of different materials that most people cannot print out of such as ABS, ASA, nylon, carbon fiber filaments, other abrasives and they will ship that product out to you when it is done printing. They offer high quality prints they even offer resin printing for some of those objects that regular 3d printers just can't create and if it's something that 3d printing cannot do such as CNC machining they also offer that as well you can get your acrylic all cut out to any size that you need and if you need a pcb guess what they're the guys for that as well once you have your pasta light receiver printed out or you received it from pcb way you're gonna need to print one of the donor spools now your options are a donor spool roller or a donor spool spinner I went for the spinner version this one is gonna take an extra 4.1 hours to print out so all in all we're looking at about 30 of print time and six plates. You can also use some 608 bearings with this one if you'd like to make it a little bit more smoother and a little bit quieter. But if you don't want to, there are also some 3D printed bearings that are included in this print. And now that we have all that boring information out of the way, let's go build these things and see how difficult they are to put together. Here are the pieces for the re-spool tool with the reason why we're doing this right here. This has happened to everybody, I'm sure, and if it hasn't happened to you, it's going to eventually. We got a spool that came apart. We have a spool that doesn't fit on the AMS light, and I would like it to. And then we have two broken cardboard spools. That's what we're aiming to fix with these things. And again, this is the first and the easiest to print. Let's see how hard it is to put together. Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't think you're ready for how difficult this is gonna to be to put together. It's it's actually insanely difficult. This is um, one of the most difficult things I've ever printed and it's dumb. Look at that. That's it. This thing is ready for re-spooling action already. 
Can you believe it? Now, all jokes aside, we are gonna have to work a little bit on this second spool rewinder because there's some assembly required. The assembly on the second spool rewinder is not terrible either, but it will require the use of something like a filament dryer that I have here, or you can print a second one of these. It just needs something else that you can roll the filament on, if you know what I mean. You need two, basically. On second thought, this is gonna be way easier. If you take an adapter, take your adapter ring like that, one on that side, and then throw the screw through, flip it over, and then screw it in over here. And you do want this one to be pretty tight because it's the one that's gonna be doing the re-spooling, but definitely don't tighten it too much because I have already broke one of these because I over tightened it. So just be very careful, just the right amount of tightness. And then, there we go. Just like that. And then we have our handle. We can slide on there and spin away. And finally, with an insane amount of printed parts. This is the pasta light. This is a little bit terrifying to be honest with you because there's so many little things. Look at those printed out bearings I was telling you about. Let's get assembling, why don't we? Yeah, cool. Now I will be following the assembly guide video that is linked in the maker world because there's just, there's no way I'm figuring this out on my own. Next, we gotta figure out this donor spool attachment situation. All right, well that is basically the assembly. Uh, it was definitely tricky, I won't lie to you, it was tricky, totally doable. So you may have noticed some changes since uh, the last clip with this thing. Uh, basically what happened is I, did not put this piece on top of the guide rail when I first assembled it. And then I tried to just slip it over top without taking out these bolts. Bad idea, it ended up snapping right there, which is totally not the design's fault. I use silk PLA, which is known to not have good strength. So I don't know what I was thinking, but anyways, I re reprinted it in some standard black PLA. And then I also reprinted this screw portion in PETG because I noticed that the drill just kind of melted it, the PLA, a little bit too quickly. So reprinted that in PETG and then I added bearings to all of these gears. All right, the building portions are done. Some were definitely easier than others to build, that is for sure. But none of that really matters if they don't work good. So now we're gonna test out the functionality of these respoolers, see how well they actually work in practice. And, and of course, we're gonna start with our very first, most simple prints out there. Let's give it a quick unscrew. And then I'm gonna throw it on this old Sunlu spool. Now the density on this print is actually super impressive. It is extremely dense and heavy, which is good because that's what you need for something like this. Almost there. With this one, we are gonna need something to hold the spool. Now that could be something like the actual filament spool holder on your 3D printer, but I don't have a 3D printer with a filament spool because I use the AMS system. So, so I'm gonna use the Sunlu filament dryer as the roller because it has these rollers on the inside that should work perfectly for this, but of course, Use that filament spool holder if you already have it on your printer, it's gonna be way easier. We're gonna try out this clear Elgu PLA that is on a cardboard spool and breaks very easily. So let's try to get that on something that's a little bit better. 
Now I'm going to use tape to tape down the edge of the filament onto the new spool, which is a bit controversial because if you get to the end of a spool, this tape could get sucked into your AMS or your printer and cause all sorts of problems, but I'm just going to make sure that I don't let that happen and monitor my print. And you can see I have it all taped down. Definitely not probably the best idea, but we're running with it. Now we're going to take our drill, get that nice and tight. I'm going to go pretty slow at first just because I kind of want to guide it. Interestingly enough, there is actually a tangle in this spool. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera, but it's kind of causing this spool to jump out a little bit. So that's nothing about the print. There's a tangle in this spool. So it's actually good that we're putting on a new spool. So unfortunately the tangle on this spool got to the point where it's starting to actually kind of ruin the filament so I'm going to have to cut the filament off here and this is all just going to be trash for me at this point. There's not too much left on the spool and it sucks that I have to do this but and it won't even let me re-spool it too easily. I probably could get through the entirety of this roll but with how it's ruining this filament here I don't really want to take a chance. But on the bright side, you can see this thing is fully re-spooled and it looks not terrible. If there's like a high or a low spot, that's from me because I was guiding the filament with my fingers, but overall, it worked really good. It's super easy to use. I would have had no issues if there wasn't a tangle in that filament. So overall, this works way better than I thought. And our option number two works in a very similar way to the first one, except it uses a crank instead of a drill. So everything is entirely 3D printed, which is nice. And also has spots to drill this into a table or a workbench of some sort, if that's something you need to do. But just like the last one, I'm gonna use this as a roller. And for this test, we're gonna be trying out some of this Elgu Rapid PETG that is on a cardboard spool. Not too much left of it, but for what is left, I would like it to be on a better working spool. So again, we're gonna tape it and then get the show on the road. Let's get to work. So I am having quite a few issues with that right there. Now this is caused from a couple of things. One is because this isn't attached to anything, so any bit of pressure is just pulling this along, which is causing some issues. The other issue I'm having is that this is not drilled down to anything. Now, if this was drilled down, then I could hold this and spin, but it's not. So I'm kind of forced to either hold this down with my hand and spin or hold this and spin. I can't do, I can't hold both and spin at the same time. So I'm having a little bit of struggles with that right now. And there's the empty spool. And then I'm gonna trim it so it feeds nicely. There's our end product from the second spool rewinder. I think all my issues would have been solved if one, this was drilled into the table or two, I was using something that was not a roller. However, the winding on this one is a little bit less tight, I guess you could say, as this one, but that's also because I had to fight with these the whole time. So if you don't have to do that, I don't think you'll have an issue with the winding at all. And finally, the third and final filament spool rewinder. We don't need this because it has its own way of doing things. The third and final filament spool rewinder definitely takes the most amount of time to print, the most amount of time to put together, is it worth it? Does it actually spool better than the previous two? Let's find out. And we're gonna find out using this Overture ABS, which again, 
isn't a cardboard spool. Let's fix it. Now, because this is ABS, I'm gonna be using the high temperature Bamboo Labs filament spool. And we're gonna take our two spool adapter pieces, screw them into each other, make sure it's tight, but again, not too tight. And I did print this out of PETG to make it stronger. We're gonna set it in the gears just like that. And we're gonna put our old filament spool right there and screw that in on top of it. Next, we're gonna take filament off of our old school, feed it through the tube, and we are gonna tape this to the new spool just like the last ones. After that, we should be all good to go, and I'm gonna be trying out this Milwaukee instead, seeing if it makes any difference. I don't know why it would, but we're just gonna see. And let's uh, let it rip. And we're done. That was so fast. And here's our finished roll of black AVS using the Postomatic. Well, I think it's pretty clear which one respooled the best. That third one definitely kind of blew the competition out of the water a little bit, but it also takes the most amount of filament, the most types of filament in my opinion, because I would recommend printing those pieces in PETG. The most amount of time to print and the most amount of time to put together so ultimately it is up to you if that is worth it for you. Those first two absolutely worked flawlessly. They would have worked flawlessly if it wasn't for my roller setup, but that's on me. You can't blame the filament respooler for that. So if you have a drill and you have the time and the filament, I would recommend printing that third one. If you have a drill, but you don't have the time with the filament, I would recommend printing the first one. And if you don't have a drill, I would recommend printing the second one. So all in all, they all do good respooling and I think I'm gonna have absolutely zero issues with printing out of any of these respooled rolls. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you gonna be sticking to one respooler over the other, or are you gonna print all three? Because ultimately they can be used in different situations depending on what you're trying to accomplish. They're all good at different things, but they accomplish the same thing. That was really confusing, but they all respool good, basically. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Go check out some of my other videos in one of those corners. Leave a like if you liked it, subscribe if you really liked it, and check out some of my other videos. And last but not least, have a great rest of your day.